What's up you guys, bloody Jacob here. Yes, it's been a little bit, but I am back to give my thoughts on the BBC production of Dracula, which was then released on Netflix. My turn. Jacob here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. Bloody Jacob, your sexy, awesome, exclusive content. show I was pretty eager to check out. Ironically, I'm wearing my uh, Wolfman t-shirt. Yes, how dare I? I, you know, I love the 2010 Wolfman film, but that's a discussion for another video, and I have reviewed that movie uh, years ago, by the way. Um, but yeah, I was anticipating this uh, new Dracula series a fair bit. Um, well, obviously in part because I'm a major, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a major, major horror fan. And, uh, you know, with Dracula being, you know, obviously, one, are you, you know, yeah, 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 Dracula is the, probably the most well-known horror villain character of all time. I think that's, uh, I think that's a good gamble, you know, to say that. Um, and, uh, I, for one, if you guys haven't seen my channel, uh, you know, I personally loved the, uh, NBC Dracula series starring Jonathan Rice Myers. Um, which only ran for one season before it was cancelled, uh, which, which was odd at the time because its ratings were actually on par with Hannibal, and Hannibal, Hannibal managed to go uh, three seasons before being cancelled by NBC. Hannibal, great, great show. Um, but, you know, it was always a bit, you know, curious to me. So, you know, people have wondered if there was, you know, behind the scenes issues with Jonathan Rice Myers and his, you know, his issues, but. No way of knowing for sure, and uh, like I said, I love the Dracula series anyway. I still think Myers did a great job. Um, you know, some people didn't like it because it was, you know, I thought it was too focused on the romance, or I don't know. I thought I still thought it was like a good, uh, you know, nuanced version of the character. You know, yeah, he wasn't uh, maybe as menacing as people would like him to be. You know, he was. It was a more sympathetic look at Dracula, I think. But there's, I mean, look at the picture. There is still obviously scenes where you could see the savagery in him, um, and I'm sure there would have been, you know, kind of more confliction with the character had it gone on longer. Um, so I am, uh, you know, I'm ready for any, you know, Dracula that comes out. I guess I, you know, I like the Dracula Untold movie with Luke Evans for what it was, and uh, this, uh, this, this one um, from the. Uh, creators of Sherlock, I believe, which I haven't watched, but, you know, the, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch series, um, stars Clytus Bane, or Bang, excuse me, as, uh, Count Dracula, who I thought did a pretty good job, I know I just butchered his name, um, I was a little worried, because when I first seen, when I first seen him, I was, uh, this guy, I don't know, he looks a little dull to me, um, but he proved me wrong, he brings, uh, quite a bit of a, Oh, just a really good dose of uh, charisma to the role, I think. I think he's really entertaining in his portrayal, and uh, he seems to be a very charismatic and capable actor in general. Um, I thought he did a good job, although I do think they sort of overexpose Dracula a little too much in this show, especially since he's meant to be more of a, I don't know if I want to say straight up villain, but obviously more of a villain, you know, traditional sinister version of Dracula. Um, I, I do think they you know, showed him a little bit too often. And we became, we became like, very, very familiar with him. But, you know, again, he was entertaining. Uh, he de uh, Bang definitely did a good job uh, with the, uh, you know, jackass side of the character, if you want to say that. This this guy is, uh, this Dracula is, you know, very, very smart. He's very, uh, you know, cruel. Um, a stop, snap of a finger, yeah, you can engage in conversa conversation with you if he finds you interesting enough for terribly long. <laughs> um, and uh, especially in episode one, you felt uh, the menace of the character at the same time as well. 
Um, and the series did start off well enough. Um, a lot of people have been mixed on uh, on it overall, especially episode three, which we'll get to in a in a little bit here. Um, but episode one, uh, I thought was quite quite good. You also have Dolly Wells as Sister Agatha. Um, that's what I will call her for now. Um, you know, just to avoid spoilers, because the series is still somewhat new. Um, it just came out at the beginning of uh, January this year, 2020. Um, but I liked her. Uh, I was actually pretty impressed by her. Um, I, I know she's been in some other stuff. Um, I'd say definitely look her up, but... Um, I liked her. She's sort of our main, you know, protagonist for the series. I don't have a picture of him here, but... You had uh, John Heffernan as uh, Jonathan Harker. I thought he was, uh, you know, quite good as well. Um, then you have uh, Morfid Clark as Mina Murray. Mina isn't really as prevalent of a character in this as others. I'm not gonna, you know, as, as in other adaptations of the of the story. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it, but she's not in it too too much. Um, and I just thought the episode was a, uh, you know, good. Uh, mixture, good hodgepodge, if you will, of a lot of classic Dracula elements. Um, there's, I feel like a good amount, there's homages to, uh, you know, Gary Oldman's Dracula, and there are def there's definitely a shot of, uh, Bang's Dracula, where he's definitely giving off a uh, Christopher Lee, you know, sort of snarl, and, you know, when he was, uh, showing his teeth and, you know, with the blood and everything, um, when Harker discovers him. Again, I'm not gonna. That's not a spoiler. You know, Harker's gonna see his nature at some point. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything past that. Um, and the show in general just had a good mesh of styles. I felt. I mean, uh, you know, had a bit of uh, it had a good bit of gothic atmosphere, especially in that first episode. A little bit in the second as well, um, but especially in the first, you had the castles and everything. Uh, you definitely had the Gary Oldman thing going with Dracula at the start of it. Um, I was told in a different sort of way, you know, being being recalled the way it was. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, and, and you had that atmosphere. You had uh, that sense of self seriousness that you'd expect from a you know serious adaptation of the, this character. Um, but then it had like just a touch of camp and a little bit of wit to it um, that made it you know sort of uh, have its own vibrancy. I guess a little bit more distinguished, I suppose. Um, but still, when it comes down to it, you know, you know what you're getting and you're getting what you're watching it for. Um, and episode two, I think, uh, was fairly consistent to the first, so I just don't think it was quite as memorable. I mean, one thing I can say about all three episodes, though, is that they tried to make them all pretty distinguishable from each other because each one was about, you know, an hour and a half, give or take. Um, so you definitely had to, you know, do something a little bit identifiable with each each part of it um in episode three it does take a take a weird turn <laughs> yeah let's just say that we'll talk about that again you know more in a few minutes um but i think the best scene you know, minor spoilers okay but i'm not going to spoil any like major major plot points um i think the best scene of the whole series was uh in episode one with dracula and uh, sister agatha's you know, face off at the at the gate of the church, um, or there there's another name for it. I'm not sure, <laughs> but uh, um, and you just seen these two characters just going back and forth with each other, just dialogue, and it was all delivered so well by both Dolly Walls and Clyde Spain. Um, you know, how he invested, it was tense, and you really felt like it was about all wills between the characters, and uh, just you know, sheer intelligence and cleverness at the same time, and it, you just watch episode one, and it'd be a pretty damn good Dracula movie, I think, and, uh, you can add, you can add it to if you want, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just thought, uh, episode one was actually pretty good, if not great, um, it's just on the verge of that, I think, uh, episode two, I thought was, it was good, it was pr pretty good, um, kind of a bit slow, it felt like it was a bit more, it was weird. It felt, I don't know if I want to say meandering. Well, it kind of was, but at the same time, you know, you, you kind of wish it had just stopped there <laughs> and uh, had left off, perhaps, in some way. I don't know. It would have been a pretty good uh, long Dracula movie, just parts one and two. It starts off in a weird way. Weird way. It is a bit jarring. Um, the transition from episode one to two, I think. 
Um, even though you figure it out pretty quickly, it's still, I feel like it should have started from a more natural point to keep up with the, the momentum of episode one. How um, much really left you in the middle of it. Um, but I still liked uh, episode two. Um, it came off like, I seen someone say like something of a murder on the Orient Express you know, sort of setup, you know, who done it. Um, with these unwitting passengers on the ship and you know covering a point of story that isn't really delved into a whole lot um, From my understanding of each version of the Dracula story and that's you know as he's journeying to England You don't always see that middle part so much um, So it wasn't too bad definitely had its moments. I think the uh, you know climax of it is pretty engaging And how they incorporate uh, you know the uh, do what they do carry over from episode one. I thought was uh, fairly well handled. And now episode three, on the other hand, um, there's gonna be some spoilers here. So uh, warning: episode one and two, I think, are really worth watching. Um, episode three, it's up to you if you want to continue. Um, but beware, it's uh, it's quite different, and uh, not everyone's gonna like it. You know, let's put that vaguely. <laughs> um, but yeah. Dracula in modern day, you know, he is uh, sent to the bottom of the ocean at the end of episode 2, then he resurfaces about like 123 years later, something like that. He's in the modern world, you know, Sister Agatha's uh, descendant, you know, or Agatha Van Helsing, right? Um, and, you know, he's kind of just having a ball, you know, getting used to all these new modern conveniences and how things have. Uh, you know, progressed and everything like that, even even to the point of uh, getting kicked out of a fridge and such. It's a uh, you know probably a bit too much humor. Again, I do think they overexposed Dracula on the show. Um, yeah, it kind of lost some of it, its intensity it had in the first episode, I think, um, which already showed him plenty. Um, but they kind of took it a bit far with that. Um, and just uh, Dracula in modern times, it's it just did not work too well. <laughs> Um, and the characters that suffered a major drop. I mean, he had Dolly Wells carrying over to some extent um, and, and she's still very good and as is Clive Spain as Dracula, but it's mostly just uh, more humor with him And I think that got a bit much as well um, And then the new characters this young, you know, Lucy this young version of Lucy um, Yeah, I, I forget the kids name who had a thing for you know, I think it was like a one of the Harkers or something. I, I don't know um it was okay. I mean, there's still a couple, you know, decent little brutal elements here and there, you know, and some decent writing with some of uh, Clive Spang's lines, but that's probably just because of how he delivered them. Because I do still think he's a talented actor, I just think he was stuck in sort of like a mixed uh, direction for his, his take on the character, uh, which was kind of out of his control. Um, and it sort of ends, you know, it, I feel like it sort of got rushed. It's an hour and a half, yeah, I feel like it was rushed at the end, I don't know. Um, would I like a season two? Maybe, you know, maybe it should work though as a prequel so they can just take Dracula back to uh, the past where I think the story works best with all its atmosphere that it, you know, really, really needs, I think, with that sort of character. Um, I, I don't know. I wanted to like it. You know, I heard so many people bashing episode three. I was hoping it wasn't quite that bad. I, and I don't think it was... It wasn't very good, but I don't think it was, you know, completely, you know, trash or anything like that necessarily. Um, but I do think it was a, you know, messed up for sure for where to take episode three. Um, you know, and I just think it's not explained quite enough. And at that point, kind of want more, you, you know traditional new version of what you've seen before <laughs> over that I, i'm not sure i mean i appreciated them doing something different but it does feel like a set for more jokes and conveniences for the story and such i don't know and it again took any sort of uh, intensity away so i don't know overall uh bbc's dracula on netflix was a mixed bag man clive spain i think is one of the better better draculas we ever had you know i'd have to think about think about more and probably watch it over again with my fiance to really get a fix on where he ranks but I do think he's one of the better uh, portrayals of him in a long time um, but again I just think he's stuck in a very mixed you know version of the show um, but 
it seems like every episode something just kind of got chipped away with and by episode three it's not it's barely even the same show if it wasn't for the actors so uh yeah i, I do think it's worth watching if you're a big genre fan um yeah that's about all i can say for it at this point um i give episode one like a b plus you know maybe an a minus at its best but probably b plus i'd give episode two probably like around uh, 83 85 percent so like a solid b and then episode three i don't even know i'd give it probably like a c c minus somewhere in there at best uh, maybe a d plus who knows <laughs> but yeah i you guys thought about uh bbc's dracula on netflix do you want to see more what was your favorite episode follow me on facebook twitter instagram like subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time peace